All right, great. So, this is the schematic I drew up. Simple multi-viewer chimney into the hyperdeck. Routing the Terranex control surface. Reclock our signal, right, so they're gonna get the DMCC. Right resolution at the right frame rate. The Terranex 2D that does conversions. Wireless return, segmenting the different parts of the workflow. Condensers on top of this cold box. It's outputting 2398. One return line for program going back out. Simultaneously, the IMAX also gonna be networked into the back end of the switcher. Debug them all at once. Hanging in there. I mean, makes me a little nervous. So, wrap it up. <laughs> Shit, dude, we're just getting started. This is Late Night Cat. Brace yourselves. This is gonna be a dense episode. So let's talk engineering here. Okay. This is the schematic I drew up, and it's important to actually take a minute and write these down. You know, I usually do several drafts of them. This is where you really start segmenting the different parts of the workflow. We have a switcher and a mixer, and those are basically where everything centers around, right? So the switcher handles the video and graphics, and the mixer obviously handles the audio. Now you can do it a lot of different ways, but this is the way we're doing it. I've done this enough to learn that it's never gonna be turnkey. Um, I'm not being able to get it into the switcher. So I have to figure out what's wrong. I'm anxious to get in and start loading it in. Never seen that knob come off before. See what happens with that. So we've got seven cables running out of the back of the switcher here. Six, actually, for cameras. Running across the top of the cold box, and we're gonna drop it down over there. We have our Teradek wireless returns. Every camera has to run, and it's often down into the basement and under the audience, and then back up through a mouse hole. And the most important thing about running it is labeling both ends. Labeling both ends of a cable before you run it. Can't tell you how many jobs I've been on that something majorly goes wrong and you run it out there real quick because you just gotta get, I mean, I just need it now and something, cable or two, gets unlabeled, it's a nightmare. Engineering will never work the first time. It'll always have something wrong. You always gotta debug it and if you don't know what you did and where it goes, you're screwed. This is actually the most pleasant cable run I've done in a while. So I'm looping out of the monitors over okay, here. One. Right, so they're gonna get the DMCC at lighting so they can see all the cameras. So this is our mobile kit that I use to direct on the road, um, but it also is awesome for live events. Basically all five cameras come into this multi-viewer, which is gonna be for the LD. It's got a power conditioner and three smart Blackmagic Smart Duos. And the reason they're so effective is they accept pretty much any frame rate resolution. This switcher is very, very, very temperamental about it. It has to be the right resolution at the right frame rate with the right interlacing. So I can see the camera here and go through the menus and tweak or without me having to be there and we can go through all cameras and debug them all at once. You just take a SDI signal in, then it loops out into the switcher. Uh, the latency on that is super, super, super low, so it's not gonna be a problem for me. We're basically looking at the exact same image at the exact same time. All right, getting set up up here, dudes. Let's talk cameras. Camera workflow is where it gets pretty complicated in this one. 1080i, 5994, which is what I think it should be. Nothing, why? My rule of thumb is unify at the camera. Pop-up infrastructures, there's too many points of failure, in my opinion, to try and unify it somewhere other than at the camera. All right, so I'm just finishing setting up our ClearCom um, HME intercom system. So it's kind of like a walkie-talkie, but a lot better. So now let's look at our cameras, and then we're gonna get Palermo down on camera. Check, check, one, two, can you hear me, Chris? Here's the base problem. All the masters for new digital, sh digital shows, which is what we're targeting, are 4K. So we want to show we can be compliant out of the gate. Is it the frame rate or is it our resolution isn't what we thought it was? Um, it obviously could be many different things. Your whole pipeline has to be 4K. The cable has to be able to handle it. Your media quadruples in size, obviously. We're trying to record 4K log in the camera and output 1080. I'm not being able to get it into the switcher. What we're opting to do is we're going to switch the show in 1080 HD. 
Let's try this. 5994i. Let me trace my connection. The big question is cameras output while recording 4K. Let's try 1080p 2398. Still nothing, okay. But that's the kind of thing that until you get those two pieces of gear in the same place and you test it, you roll and you plug it in and you see it in, in the frame rate you're expecting, because that's the big one is frame rate. I set the switcher to be 1080i 5994. The camera was set into 2398. Believed up until this moment that the C300's converted to 5994 on the output, but they may not. So now that we know that's talking to each other, let's try this frame rate in 4K. And I'm gonna change this to 2398, 1080p. So with any luck, that'll show up in camera two. It does, great, that's good. Once you get that in and you see it, from there, everything kind of relaxes a little bit. I'm gonna change this resolution from 1920 YCC 4 to 10 bit. I'm gonna change that to 4K. So I'm changing it to 3840 by 2160. With any luck, this will remain. So far, it looks like it has. Let's power cycle it, make sure there are no surprises. Everybody cross your fingers. Boom, that's a good sign. So now what we have, 4K in camera, 1080 in the switch at 2398. That's great. Now, the next step, what I wanna do from here, I want the cameras recording in camera, Canon Cinelog 2. So the most dynamic, the most flat, gives me the most power and color correction in post, right? So what we're doing now is we're just going through camera by camera. We're gonna go through all five cameras and configure them all the same, make sure they're all the same. We're gonna do it right here together, but in white balance to 4,400 Kelvins at 800 ISO. Hit the middle button again. Great, now go to the left one. Cool. That all looks right. We have to send like a program feed with graphics, like a dirty feed into the studio, into the displays on the trusses that the audience is watching in house. So we got one return line for program going back out to uh, the, the monitors on the truss. In the switch, I want a LUT, I want a linear color space at 1080. Output setting or overlays, and I go in, I'm gonna say go down to LUT, activate, on. Boom, so that whenever it displays on the monitors and the stages for the audience, it doesn't look flat and ugly. It looks like a finished picture that has graphics, it has everything. Badass in yeah. theory, I just yeah. hope it works. So this is what a Teradek looks like in a monitor. What it's telling you here is that you're getting video signal from the receiver or you're getting signal from the receiver. We have an image, the cable's good. We need to figure out the transmission between the Teradek transmitter and receiver. This is most of our infrastructure, believe it or not, for the whole show. This is the ATIM Blackmagic 1ME production switcher. In here is a deck in which we're gonna record the, uh, the clean feed of the show. This is a router um, that is going to power our network, like between all the devices, because everything is networked together via ethernet and talks to each other in the back end. And then this is a Terranex 2D that does conversions. In this case, what we're gonna be doing is running the iMac into the Terranex so it can feed video to us, while simultaneously the iMac's also gonna be networked into the back end of the switcher and be loading graphics as we go to the show. We'll put this larger monitor on top to be the line cut so we can all see it. And I've still gotta do a little practice and research with the Grass Valley interface about how to do the DVE uh, inputs for the images. Um, I'm going to build it in the software and then go for the interface to cut it. Computer software is talking to the back end of the switcher. Check this and see if we can get this all connected and talking. We basically have two different main lines here, right? Obviously there's audio and then there's video. And they basically stay in their own independent worlds. The only thing that really crosses over is the iMac. So now I'm routing the Terranex which is gonna be the feed for the computer visually for video playback into the switcher into input seven. So the Terranex is gonna allow us to take that video, bring it into the switcher visually, and also break out the audio to XLR so I can send it to the mix for playback in the house. Did you ask Matt to carry a keg? But, but not me, because I'm a woman, you think I can't lift a keg? I'm, I'm sorry, are you laughing? Well, it's 160 pounds, a little heavier than a box of wine. Obviously, it's a pre-recorded element that we're playing in, so it doesn't really matter the record of the audio. It matters the audience's laughs recorded live. We have six different 
lavalier mics, three audience plant mics that are in the truss to get the audience laughs. It's because we don't, I do not want to use a laugh track. I want it to be legitimate. I got the video lines run, but made a crucial mistake with my pre-planning. It didn't think ahead to run the XLR at the same time, so now I get to bring the lift back and run a second round of cable. So that's a good lesson. Um, should have taken an extra second and really made sure I looked over my schematics. I totally just missed the audio path. Thank God for editing, right?